changes will require parental consent for students 15 and under who want to change their names or pronouns at school. Gender-affirming surgery will be banned for those 17 and under. Joining me now to discuss is CTV's political commentator, Tom Mulcair. Good morning to you, Tom. So the premier released this seven minute, 28 second video last night. Um, she's going to detail more of it today. And we're hearing reaction from teachers, sports organizations, parents. Can I begin by getting your thoughts on this new policy that is going to restrict access for transgender youth, uh, restrict their access to medical care, to sports, um, what do you make of, of what we're hearing from Alberta right now? My first reaction is we're going through what we saw in New Brunswick with Premier Blaine Higgs, who was clearly playing politics with this, and it led to several members of his own Conservative caucus quitting because they saw what he was doing. And I think that you have to be super careful because this is emotional, so it's easy to get the public riled up about it. But it's also young people whose very lives will depend on whether or not they are able to affirm their gender identity. And we have to be so careful. Scott Moe was the third uh, one to, to move in on this. It was almost predictable. It had an electoral overtone in addition to the purely political. Now, what I find interesting with uh, Danielle, uh, Premier Danielle Smith, is that she's not fighting in an election right now. So this is more an attempt to get on side with her own harder right base in the United Conservative Party, the same base that turfed Jason Kenney as Premier. So she's not going to allow that to happen to her. So she seems to be in a rush to get ahead of these issues. Her way of explaining it, frankly, is far more compassionate than what we got from Blaine Higgs, which was, in my viewing of it, very blatantly political. She, it's more nuanced, but the upshot is the same. Uh, you know, if you have a, a young person in adolescence going through all the difficulties and very often the bullying and the self-questioning and the doubt, and it's it's actually very, very dangerous uh, for, for they could it could involve self-harm uh, to, to not say more if they're not able to identify as they have always identified themselves and their gender. So it's 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 such a tough issue, Marcia, because even the terminology is difficult to master. It's easy to just show this to the public the way Daniel Smith did and said, this is a common sense decision. But it's more complex than that. And that's why duly trained medical practitioners are super careful around this. They have the ability to help nuance it. That's why professional educators are careful around this, but they know how to handle the contours of it and give a safe space for a young person who is going through this sort of identity issue and the questioning and the difficulties that come with it. Okay, I appreciate that you pointing out for our viewers the differences between New Brunswick and Saskatchewan. Um, from what I have read just this morning, Alberta's policies will be more restrictive than those other two provinces, but I'm, I'm glad you were able to give us that sort of political context. I'm wondering then, in terms of fallout, do you think there will be, uh, I, before you answer, I just want to pop up a couple of tweets that we're seeing from federal ministers. They're weighing in on this. This is from Marcy Ian, who's saying that she is incredibly disappointed to see this. These policies are dangerous and intentionally restrictive. They deliberately endanger and isolate trans kids. Also, we've got something from Randy uh, Boissonneau this morning saying, uh, with the announcement tonight by the Smith government, I am at the defense of every student and family who will be affected. The policies are restrictive, therefore the most dangerous in this country, putting kids' lives at risk. So if you're um, Premier Smith, where, what do you do with this? Do you do anything, Tom? Well, I, I think that it, that almost plays into her hand because you have people on the progressive side of politics lining up against her, and she gets to look at her base and say, you see, this is, the, this is what I'm willing to do for you because this is the view that you have in life. But, you know, I've had a chance to meet and speak with, not a lot, but I, I do have an appreciation for, for Danielle Smith. And I really do sense that she's playing with, a, with something very dangerous here. And uh, I tend to agree with those who say that you have to realize that self-harm and the possibility of self-harm are very real for people who are already going through serious bullying because that type of gender identity comes with a lot of name calling. And that's why a safe space being created in a school with professional educators, with the help of outside medical professionals, 
that's what's needed more than playing political games with this. These kids should not become a political football. They should be helped and, and they should be encouraged to identify themselves as they are and be devoid of pressures from one side or the other in, in this whole complex discussion. Uh, I don't believe we are officially expected to hear from the Prime Minister today, Tom, but do you think that he will he will weigh in on this? I'm, I'm absolutely confident that Mr. Trudeau will weigh in on this. Um, this is pure Trudeau. And it, it, it's interesting that he, I will also venture a guess that he's being told by some of his top advisors, boss, don't touch this with a 10-foot pole. But this is pure Trudeau. This is where Justin Trudeau moves in on issues like this and will identify with it and take them on. He's done that a couple of times in, in his career that I've been able to see. This is something that for him is a question of his politics, but his worldview, his, his view of life and ha how people should be respected in who they are and, and, and dealt with. So there's no question that if and when he does, and I expect him to, there will be many who will correctly say that all this has become political because the minute you have different sides in politics talking about it, it has by definition become political. But I do think that it's time to try to roll back a little bit some of the overheated rhetoric and some of the easy stuff, you know, like changing pronouns and stuff. Who even understood what that would have meant just a few years ago? So if we're able to take a cool-headed and, and clear-eyed view of this, we realize that there's nothing new about this. What is new is the ability to talk about it and to deal with it. You know, a generation ago, it would have simply been the bullying, and that could have wound up with being beaten up or, or otherwise badly treated. Now, a lot of people are coming together, friends, families, and saying, this is my child, this is my friend, this is who they are, and they should be allowed to identify as such and not be the object of bullying, coercion, or crude politics. Tom all care for us. Tom, thank you for all of that. Tom is our political commentator here at CTV.